Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are going to make this gorgeous stubby holder for St. Patrick's Day. Now I've got to say guys this is not really a stubby. <laughs> it's my water bottle <laughs> and it's not the size of a stubby so it's relatively thin. So this looks a little big for it but it is actually the right size for a stubby and I know this for a fact because I have two of them in stock but they're so aged I'm too embarrassed to show. <laughs> so what I did was I just got the right measurements and used those measurements to make our stubby holder. How gorgeous is this? I love, love, love. And you know what I like about it? I like that you can actually use it for water bottles as well if you wanted to or for a glass as well. All right, so that's that. And I used roughly between 25 and 26 grams. So not a lot, half a skein, if you will, uh, depending on the size of your skein. You might even need a quarter of a skein, really, for the green. And for the yellow and black, I literally used minimal three, five grams. I can't even remember. It wasn't much at all. Now, heads up, newbies. This, the technique I used to crochet this, I used the Grafgan way of crocheting. So just be weary if you are new to crochet that this is going to test your patience. This tiny little bit here is going to test your patience. Now, if you are a more confident crocheter, my gosh, really enjoy doing this tiny little gorgeous piece. And I say tiny, but it actually took a long time because I used, it, it, the, the actual hook itself called for a four millimeter hook. I used a 3.5 millimeter hook because I wanted to give it a more, um, the stitch, I wanted the stitch to be close. So I wanted it to be more dense. Kind of made this bubble a little bit, but the bubbling is all right. It doesn't affect your uh, bottle at all. All right. So it stands nice and still. All right, so that's it. There's not much to tell you. This is all done in single crochet, except this top row, which is the reverse uh, single crochet or uh, crab stitch, if you will. I do give you another option. If you just want to do a normal single crochet row, you can. All right, let's pop those in there just for fun. <laughs> And that's fine. All right, so I used a 3.5 millimeter hook. The yarn is um, Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton, eight ply, or a DK weight, or, or a number three overseas. So it's a relatively thin, thinner cotton than average. So I used a 3.5 millimeter hook. It was a bit of a, you know, hard work on my hands, but I <laughs> used it, right? Um, I needed a pair of scissors and I needed one stitch marker. I would suggest having two, and I'll explain that in a minute, um, and one sewing needle. You will need that needle. There will be ends, heads up, yeah? The reason I suggest using a second stitch marker is when I was weaving in, I'll take those out, they're a bit silly in there. <laughs> when I was weaving in the ends on the inside, I forgot to pop a stitch marker in my my thread and it was coming undone and I was losing stitches. That's the only reason why you would need a second one. But I do explain that in the middle of the tutorial anyways. So that's that. Guys, I'm not going to talk anymore because this tutorial goes like 100 years again, like the, most of my tutorials. Um, and there you go. Don't forget, guys, if you don't want to make a stubby holder but want something else for St. Patrick's Day, I will pop a link to the St. Patrick's Day playlist in the description box down below. And you can go through that list and pick what you like. Okay, we've done Clover. We've done... Um what did we do last year? My brain. Um, I can't remember now. But we've done a pin cushion. I'm popping that in there as well. So you will have an option to make other things. But I mean, how gorgeous does this look? I love this reversed single crochet or the crab stitch. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. Good luck creating your gorgeous St. Patrick's Day stubby holder. Alrighty, guys. We're going to start off by forming a magic ring or a magic circle or a magic loop. Uh, popping your tail end of your yarn just in front of you, three fingers, grabbing your working end and passing it over the other one. Let's get a nice close up. Just forming a little X or a cross if you will. Pop your hook under your first loop, grab that back loop and pull it up towards you. Now what you do is you're holding everything. So don't let everything go, yep. All right, hold it nice and steady. Chaining one. 
and you're doing a single crochet in the same space and a single crochet is popping your hook in the space pull up a loop two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two just hold it there for a minute and grab a stitch marker and it doesn't matter if your loop miss moves around a little bit now Try not to make it move though. <laughs> Don't force it to move. <laughs> All right, so you can give your tail a gentle tug and closing that center a little bit, not a lot, a little bit. Yep. Popping another single crochet in that space. So hook in the space, pull up a loop, you know, tighten it up a little, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And another one. This is your third one fourth and keep going until we reach 12 yes I'm going to grab some thread <laughs> give me a moment all right so four five six now if you find your loop is too big give it a gentle tug but leave enough to put another six stitches in there yeah so seven eight nine and 10. Whoops, <laughs> 11. I don't know why I wanted to stop at 10. 12. I did say 12, didn't I? <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to take it undone because my thread has split a little bit. Did I take two undone or three? <laughs> I think I took three undone. I'm going to have to count mine again, guys. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> Mary, wake up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now it's fairly tight the stitches because we are using that one size. It's only half a size smaller, not one size. Smaller hook. We're using a 3.5. All right. So now what I want you to do before you slip stitch, grab your tail end of that first end that you started with. Give it a tug and watch the magic happen to your little center. Yeah. Oops, and then what you have to do is just slip stitch. Mm, let me get a close on. It's nice and tight, my stitches. And you're slip stitching in the stitch with your stitch marker in. So you're putting it through the both loops, pull your loop through, and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Remove your stitch marker for a moment. That's, whoops, <laughs> that's row one. Chain one, turn your work like so and you're popping a sing single crochet in the same stitch now it's a little tight but because we're pulling that thread but pop it in there anyway it's a little tight and there's your first one so what you're going to be doing is turning your work all the time throughout this um, tutorial so your work will always turn okay single crochet there where your thread is that's the inside of your work though. So remember that, okay? So maybe leave your tail until we get halfway through and you'll know by then once it's grown a little bit that that's the inside. Single crochet in the same stitch again. Now you need to put two in every stitch. So you're putting a single in the same stitch like so. There. And then you're putting a single in every stitch you get into. So that's those two loops on top and your single crochet on the bottom. I'm sorry, you're putting two singles. One and two. And that's in every stitch. I don't know if I said two or one. One and two. And so on. All right, so continue along in that manner. I'm going to go a little bit faster now. one and two one and two all right so the deal now is to actually count your stitches all right so I'll let you count yours 
and we'll meet up in a moment. So from here, what are you going to do? Once again, you are going to slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker in it, chain one and turn. So pop your hook, mm, that tight stitch, pull the loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook, taking out your stitch marker. And I've split my thread, of course I have. Oh, it's not working for me today, guys. Bear with me. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Chain one, tighten it up, turn your work in that same stitch, which is really very tight. You might want to loosen it a little bit, Mary. <laughs> it's really very tight. Pop in a single crochet. Sorry, but coming out of frame there. Just couldn't get it in there. Let's bring that out. That's better. So single crochet, pop in a second single crochet, like so. Oh, I'm sorry. Pop your stitch marker in your first one. My apologies there. Always keep a stitch marker or a piece of thread or something so that you know the end of the row because sometimes you can actually, oh, put <laughs> my hand there. Sometimes you can actually miss it, all right? So two in that one stitch. You've got to grab the next one if I can find it. It's right there. And one in your next, okay? Two in your next, one and two, one in your next. Two in your next, one and two, and one in your next. All right, so I want you to do that. Um, do two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way through. If you do your calculations correct, you will end up with your very last stitch here being a one. And then you will need to count your stitches, which will be 36 stitches. All right. So head off on your own. Do your two, one, two, one, two, one. And I will meet you back here in the very last stitch once you're done. Alrighty, here we are at the end of this row and I just wanted to show you something real quickly. Making sure you are not missing that very last stitch. Now it's really tight but it's actually in there. How you can tell it's a stitch, it has a little V looking thing in it. Alright, so that very last stitch should get you 36 single crochets in your round. Your work might be uh, turning up a little bit, don't stress, that will sort itself out later. And there's your last single crochet and what are you doing you're slip stitching in your space with your stitch marker in it pull the loop through oh don't lose the loop like i just did okay now take out your stitch marker chain one turn your work always remember to turn that work yeah popping in your stitch with a single crochet Pop your stitch marker in there again. Don't we love that stitch marker? And that is so tight, it's going to be an issue at the end of the row. <laughs> Do you get sick of me singing, guys? I'm sorry. Okay, so we are going to pop another single crochet in the same space. And then we're going to pop a single crochet in each of your next two stitches. So one in your first, one in your next, and then two in the next. One and two. Yes? And now you're going to do that again. One in the first, one in your next, and then two in your next. One and two. Once again, one in your first, one in your next and then two in your next all right super duper easy that is what you need to do in this round it's one one two one one two one one two one one two all the way until you get to your last two stitches and then it'll be one one all right so head off on your own continue that row and I will meet you back once you're done and when you return you should have 48 stitches in the round all right so head off on your own do your one one two and i'll meet you back here once you're done all righty guys here i am at the end of the row i have my last two single crochets so i'm going to put my last one and my last one okay so 
you should have ended up with two single crochets left and now you're going to slip stitch into your stitch with your stitch marker in like normal this round is going to change so get ready all right we're going to start by chaining one as normal single crocheting in the first stitch as normal like so popping your stitch marker in without splitting the yarn I think I did split that yarn so I'm gonna try that again <laughs> I'm doing well today. You know what it is when you're using a hook size a little bit smaller than what you're supposed to That will happen. The yarn will split. It happens. All right pop your stitch marker in and This row is a very basic row. Remember you should have 48 stitches in the round All right, so now when I say basic, I mean absolutely basic in every stitch You are popping one single crochet. That's it. Just one all right, your job is to just do your one single crochet in the round until you get to the end of the row. You should not be increasing. It should be just the same amount of stitches at the end of the row. All right, so head off on your own. Do your single crochet in every stitch and I will meet you back here once you're done. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. I'm just about to slip stitch into the top of that stitch with your stitch marker in it. You'll notice your circle is almost starting to take shape. It's starting to flatten out a little bit. You've still got some bubbles there. Chain one. Guess what? Turn your work and do it again. So single in your first. Popping your stitch marker in there. Mm, that nice tight stitch. Oh, it's going to be hard to get into at the end of the row. Oh, dear. All right. And guess what? Single all the way across your row super duper duper easy all right so head off on your own doing your single crochets across your row and i will meet you back here once you're done all righty guys here we are at the end of this row slip stitching into the stitch with your stitch marker in it pull your loop through Pull it through to the loop on your hook, chain one, guess what? Turn your work and do it yet again. All right, so I need you to do one more row of single crochets when we can get the stitch marker in. I think it might actually be the stitch marker now, not the thread. Hmm. Anyway, keep going. Single crocheting in every stitch all the way across your row and I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. I'm going to slip stitch into that stitch marker right there. Oh, right there. Oh, it's not working for me. Hello. Slip stitch. <laughs> it really is not working. Why? Why? Let's pull this stitch marker out. You slip stitch into yours. <laughs> Hopefully you haven't messed up yours like I have with the really tight stitching. Okay. Chaining one, guess what? One last round. So turning your work. Single crochet in your same stitch. Popping your stitch marker in. Get excited, guys, because after this round, we're going to start changing things up just that little bit. And once again, that's very tight. <laughs> so single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. And I shall meet you back here once you're done. Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of the row. Don't forget guys, you should always have 48 stitches at the end of these rows. It should never have changed, yeah? So you slip stitch to join, chain one, turn your work. Now this is where things are going to change, alright? Now I'm going to show you fairly close so you can have a look what I'm doing here. In each stitch, like that, you've been putting your hook through two loops, right? Two loops on top and the rest of your stitch on the bottom, yeah? Two loops right there. Yes, but now what you're going to do for this round is when we single crochet, you're still going to do it, but you're going to pop it in that back loop of your stitches right there. All right, so let's start with our very first stitch, which is going to be difficult because we have turned our work, okay? But you want to keep in sync with your work. 
So can you see, if you face it to you, you can see the loop there. So you're going to go in that tight loop. <laughs> if you can get it, if you can get it. There you go. And there's your first single crochet. It's tight, it's not, it has to be tight because we're actually in the stitch. Do your first single crochet and popping your stitch marker in that stitch right there. And then you're doing the same in every stitch. Back loop only, single crochet. Back loop only, single crochet. And so on all the way through your round. I know it's a little bit tricky, but it's actually not completely difficult, all right? If you are new, take your time, like I am. <laughs> I'm, yeah, sure, that's what I'm doing it for, because I'm new, <laughs> not because I'm struggling. Um, the stitches I make are really tight anyways, so I will have very, very tight stitching. So there you go. All right, so I don't think I need to show you any more. What you need to do is single crochet in the back loop. And what will happen is your work will start turning up. So that will become the inside of your cup cozy or your stubby holder, whatever you want to call it. And then before we grow any further, we will actually weave that end in. All right, so it will start turning up like that. Okay, so head off on your own, single crocheting in your back loops all the way through your piece like so get to your last stitch right there and i'll talk to you about what you're going to do next all righty guys here we are at the end of the row what you should have is that your edges now should be turning in which is forming the sides of your work or starting to form what i need you to do before you even slip stitch to join make sure you've got 48 stitches in your round grabbing your uh, sewing darning needle we're going to weave this end in because now we're not going to be able to do it later <laughs> it'll get to once this is really high we're going to have to turn it inside out and then weave it in and it's just better to do it now and then it's done all right so we did do a magic ring magic circle it's kind of opened up a little bit so if you want to give it a bit of a tug that will close a little bit more if you're happy to just leave it open that little bit that's fine too but I still want you to weave in this end. Now, if you've used cotton, <laughs> like I have, and it's really tight, your needle is going to struggle to get in there. So just, just even on the top of the stitches there. So you're getting it through some stitching and at least, all right? It, it is very hard to uh, weave in cotton. And also making sure that you cannot see the needle from the front doesn't make too much of a, a difference in this case if it comes out because it's underneath your stubby and nobody will notice it however we still want it to be nice yeah i like it to be nice i'm very fussy <laughs> i'm very fussy don't you think oh this is, this is going to make my needle blunt <laughs> which is a good thing because when i use these sewing needles <laughs> i always pin myself guess what we're going back through the way we just came in but different directions of course different stitches because we don't want to unravel what we've just done yeah but once you've weaved it in a gazillion times like i just did <laughs> exaggerating by a few million of course you can leave it there that is now officially gone and you're thinking oh i don't know what which one's the right way now you will know because your work is starting to fold in that way because we went in the back loops all right so making sure you've got your 48 stitches i've got 47 at the moment because i haven't done the last stitch i think i've got 47 let's get close up no i've got 46 i haven't done the last two <laughs> stitches wake up mary so there's a back loop of that second last stitch and in we go there's the back loop of the very last oh, tight stitch right there. Now, the reason this is tight is because this is the stitch we used to turn with at the end of the row. It's not going to work for me, is it? So the way to do that is to use your hook to slip in. You can see the way I did that? I just put my hook in there. I went like that. Use the pointy part of the hook. And 
propped it through there. If yours is as tight as mine, I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But there you go. And there's your last single crochet, what you're going to do. <sighs> Let's take the stitch marker undone. <laughs> you're going to slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker in it. See how tight that stitch was, yeah? Then you're going to chain one, turn your work single in your first stitch. Now we're going right into the stitch now. We're not going into the back loops or the front loops. Into the whole stitch again for one row. Uh, oops, did that close? Yes, it did. Okay. So right into both loops. And let me show you the loop so you can see them right there. Both loops. Single. Two. Single. Three. Now you're going to find these a bit tight, which is normal because you've been doing back loops in the previous round, so it's a bit tight, but just persist, yeah? Single in both loops, and so on. All the way across the row. Are you getting sick of me saying that? And I'll meet you back here at the very last stitch once you're done. Alrighty, guys, here we are at the end of the row once again. And once again, what you're doing is slip stitching into the top of the stitch with a stitch marker. Okay, and you're doing your normal chain one and turn. So you go chain one, turn, single in your first stitch. Hold it there. We're going to have some changes in this row, some color changes actually. Now, this can get a tad confusing, so bear with it, guys. Okay, take your time in this round. All right, so you've done one single crochet. You need to do another 17 in the green, and then we're going to change to the yellow. So we've done one in your first, which is right, I just want to see where we are, right there. Your second is right there. And three. And four. I just want to bring this out a bit so you don't get dizzy on me. Okay, five. On the 18th stitch is where we're actually going to start to change our colour. So you pop your hook in and pull a loop through like normal, drop that green. I find it's easier to just pop it in my fingers at the back. Grab your yellow, pop it on the hook and just pull that thread through. All right? It's going to be loose and everything so what you could do is just Pop your tails in your hands at the back if you want to. Oh, no, no, you don't need to do that, sorry. You pop the yellow tail in your hand at the back. You're going to crochet over the green. I'm going to show you nice and close. You're going to jump into the very next stitch and you're going to do 12 single crochets in yellow. And that's your very next stitch there. You're in that one and you want to jump into there. So into there, making sure you are crocheting over your green with a single crochet one single into your next two and three and so on until you get 12 making sure you're crocheting over your green tail eleven and before you complete your 12, you're going to start your 12, pull your lip through like normal, drop the yellow in your fingers there, just hold it there, pick up your green again, and pull your loop through like so. And then you do 18 single crochets across and off you go. One, two, this is in the next stitch by the way, three, and my 18th is right there all right oh it's too far away you didn't need to see that it was just counting 18 <laughs> slip stitch into your stitch with your stitch marker is 
pull a loop through, grab that stitch mark out for a moment, chain one, turn. And from there, you're going to go straight into your next single crochet. One, don't forget to pop your stitch marker in there. And you're doing 18 across again. So one, two, three, Seventeen, and let's get a nice close up before we continue all right but before you continue I tell a lie have a look at that right there okay every time we flip our work we are going to knot so you need to make sure that you unknot your work all right otherwise you're going to end up with knots everywhere it's going to get tangled it's going to be an absolute mess that is what happens when you're doing, um, I don't know what to call it, graph ganning work, if you will. That's what kind of happens when you do that, all right? So in this round, we're going to continue exactly the same way we came, but we need to eventually add a, another green there because we can't carry the green back. We can, but I just find it looks terrible and we need it for both sides, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to single in that last stitch right there, start it, hold it there let me bring this up for you so you can have a look pass your green forward this time because every time it's the wrong side of your work that's where your tail ends should be grabbing your yellow which means it's going to knot again which we're going to have to fix up at the end of this row grab the loop and pull it through to your normal stitch before you pop your single crochet in that next yellow stitch which is really tight right there pop your hook it's a little tricky this part pop your hook under that little yellow loop it's a little bit tricky and then pop it into that yellow stitch there pull your loop through like normal and do your first single crochet and then you're just going to single crochet all the way across two three eleven and twelve now once again your work is knotting here I can feel it knotting for me all right so just grab that green passing it over I'm sorry you didn't see me do that but just really passing the green back yeah so moving your other green out the way completely you need to add another green so that tail is going to have to come forward and you need to add another green so grab another green now let's take that stitch undone for now all right so i've grabbed my other green now the next row we're going to change colors completely okay so you won't have any green on your next row so you're going to have a few ends here and there all right so let's start that single crochet again making sure that thread is right out the way I'm sorry I'll move everything so you can see all right so before you complete this stitch you're going to grab your tail pass it forward because this is the inside of your work okay grab your green popping it through that loop there grabbing your tail if I can find it popping it where is it got the wrong one forward on top of your yellow just holding it there starting your green in the very next stitch one two and then 18 across okay I'm gonna pop this on fast for you and off we go seventeen and 18 right there all right and hold it there for a minute and what you have is that if you were to pop your threads at the the front way like we were you know how I told you to pass them through your tails would be hanging off here but they're now hanging off on the inside of 
your work. Now, this is very much graph gaining, guys, so this can get a tad confusing, especially when we add the black and then we re-add the green. It can get a little bit confusing. You're going to need a second yellow for this part here, and you're going to need to cut your green if you want to cut it, or you can keep the thread and carry it up. Yours truly is going to be cutting it and weaving it in later. We are going to be adding a black right in the middle here somewhere okay and still needing you're going to need at least three yellows here okay the first row is not a problem the second row you will need another yellow but this next row is going to be black and yellow and no more green all right so what i want you to do here um, i actually would like for you to take that stitch marker out slip stitch into it i mean you can slip stitch first Pull it through and pull it through to the loop you are in. I would pull a loop through, cut your yarn. Because there's no way we're going to be able to carry that up. It'll be far too high once we add the black. And you'll work that out later. That green yarn we can crochet over and still have to weave that in at the end, by the way. But remember what we do, we actually need to turn our work. So you are starting this way. Now, if you're kind of a little bit lost at where to pop your black, just count back 18 stitches and it'll help you. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So just pop your hook in that stitch right there. All right. So grab your black. All right. I've got your black. Grab your black and just pull a loop through like so. Yeah. Pass your tail forward just for a minute. Just want to lock it into place. Chain one single crochet on top of the same stitch there grab your stitch marker and pop it in now black's going to be a little bit hard to see online guys okay but we'll see how we go now grab your little tail end here you're going to crochet over it a few stitches yep so single into your next second one single three single four single five I don't know how long you want to crochet over it for. Single six. We're going to weave it in as well. So they're doing double work here. Single seven. And I'm going to leave that there. All right. And single eight. And just keep going across. We'll pop this on fast until we get to our yellow. All right. That's our last uh, green there. We're going to pop our hook in. Start the black. Drop it inside where all the other threads are. Yeah. Grab your yellow. It's going to get a little tricky. At the end of this row, we need to untangle our yarns. Yeah. So pull that loop through like so. Single into your first yellow once, twice, and three times across. Hold it there. We're going to change back to the black. So you need um, some black thread. All right, here we go. Here's some black. And with the black, you're going to crochet over the yellow just for this row. And in the next row, you need to add another yellow. It's a lot of mucking around, guys. But you can do this. I, I reckon you can. Hold your yellow in your fingers at the back, grabbing your black and just pulling that loop through like so and what you're going to do is grab your yellow again because you're going to start crocheting over it very very tricky guys very tricky and in a minute we might actually weave in a couple of ends just to get rid of the mess that we have here hence the word mess <laughs> all right so what we're going to do grab your black at the back we're going to crochet over our yellow so you're going to crochet uh, six single crochets across. So single in your first, one, crocheting over your yellow, single in your second, two, single in your next, three, and your next, four, five, 
and six started hold it there drop it you should have three single crochets left we did three in the beginning six black and three yellows to end with okay all right so what you're doing is you're grabbing your yellow pulling the loop through single in your first and your second and before we do a single in the third we need to change to the black again because this is what we're doing we're doing the black all the way through our um, piece now all right so what I would suggest you do here we go get a little bit confusing now cut your green before we continue I'm looking at this mess it really is bothering me well we can get rid of this green for starters just for now we're going to need that later um, and we can start untwisting some of the threads you see here this will happen okay so heads up guys it's going to happen all righty it is tangled <laughs> but that's what it's all about when you're doing graph ganning you must you must untangle all the time because otherwise forget it okay don't bother doing graph ganning <laughs> if you can't untangle all the time all right there we go okay so that's what we have for now we need to do the black in the round now let's move that out the way so you're going to need yet again another color what um, have you cut the other green on this side you have good we're gonna, we're gonna weave in some ends soon because um, at the end of this row I think it's a really wise idea or we're just it's gonna be chaos it's gonna be ends everywhere and confuse us yeah all right so what we're going to do is start our yellow I'm sorry finish our yellow start our black pop your yellow in pull up the loop hold the yellow at the back because that's where all the ends are grabbing your black and just pulling it through it's a new black you've got here okay you could have carried a lot of the yarn across oh, too close on my guys a lot of the yarn across but I'm going to tell you now, it's better not to carry in this sense, okay? Because it can look a little messy. Put the green down there for now. All right, we're going to crochet over that black tail for a few minutes. A few stitches, I should say. And do your first double crochet. I'm sorry, single crochet. We're not even doing double crochets at all in this tutorial. What's going on? So single crochet all the way across, crocheting over your black tail for now which we're going to be weaving in later okay there we go all the way well not all the way we can drop that and remember you are crocheting 18 stitches across okay so I'm here at the end of the row I just want to show you what I'm doing I've popped my hook in that second last stitch. I'm just going to grab the tail and pop it over there. So there we go. All right, so now we are slip stitching into the, mm, the top of that tight stitch. Slip stitch into the top of your tight stitch. <laughs> slip stitch in there pull a loop through pull it through to the loop on your hook chain one turn your work and we're going into the very next stitch like so yes and do your stitches wait a minute pop your stitch marker in that first stitch black is so hard to see guys oh my gosh good luck with this <laughs> I hope you're not having as much um, awful luck that I'm having. I'm struggling to see and it doesn't help when you're looking through the lens of a camera. So I'm going to pop this on fast for you and get to your yellow and off we go. All right, here we are at the end of the row. I'm on my second last stitch. All right before we continue you need to actually test your stubby holder because it seems like a lot of work to do if it doesn't 
fit, okay? If your bottle or your uh, um, your uh, stubby or whatever it is you've got doesn't fit. Now, I've got an old bottle here, which I've got the word plant on it because we have some plants out the backyard that we're growing some grass for the cat, <laughs> as you do. All right, so mine fits perfectly, and this is our water that we use to water the plants with. <laughs> It's a little, a little tub of grass at the back so that the cat can have some grass because it's a concreted area as it is. All right, so too much information. So there we go. So guess what, guys? Look, since we know we're right at the moment, we are going to weave in some of these shorter ends. Leave all the big ones the way they are. What I want you to do is grab your sewing needle and let's start, since we've changed to the, the brighter colours, Let's start with the green, okay? Because the green is uh, stuck under my finger for starters. <laughs> Any green you can find. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. We're in. <laughs> it took a while. Sorry, guys. All right. So what I want you to do is grab your green, just moving all your other tails out of the way for a minute. And just with this green that you can see right here, you're working on the inside of your work, yeah? So what I want you to do is just grab a little thread somewhere like that. Okay, making sure you can't see the needle from the front. And you can't, all right? So all I did was grab a couple of threads and pull that through, and my tail is way too long, <laughs> and pull it through like so. Then the rest is simple. Well, no, not really. We haven't got to the simple part yet. You want to get down to the area where you can actually weave in some of your single crochet. So I'm going to go down another level, right there. Oh, making sure you can't see the needle. <laughs> and then I'm going to weave in and out of single crochet stitches. And there's no way this is going to come undone once you start doing that. And I think, oh, that's really thick. That is not coming undone. You can do a little bit more if you like. Yours truly is not going to. That will not come undone. Give it a cut and just pull it through. All right. So what I want you to do now is to, well, let's look at the mess I've made here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I find when you're doing this, it's easy just to pull your work further out. This is the trick I have. And then you're able to find your, bring that out a bit, you're able to find your piece and bring it over. Okay? That's the way I work. <laughs> it works, it works. Sometimes it doesn't work and that's the end of that. All right? So what I want you to do is making sure everything is untangled, weaving all the smaller ends, but not the ones in this row yet, in your very last row, because that can get a little tricky. You need to do a couple of more rows. I would weave in all the greens and all of your lower yellows, okay? All right, just weave in those stitches right there. And then meet me back here and we'll continue with the rest of the row. All righty guys, I weaved in as many ends as I could. I left a couple of little black ends, yes. Um, but well, let's not worry about that for now. Just be weary about your work knotting. All right, just be weary about that. And I found once I was sewing in my ends, this was coming undone. So maybe pop a stitch marker through your loop. So when it comes undone, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, just grab a stitch marker and pop it through the loop when you are doing things like that. And the reason I wanted you to sew them in is because, or weave them in, I should say, is because this is going to get tricky and more trickier for a couple of rows. After that, it'll be back to normal again. All right. So, where's your black? There, we have one more black stitch to go, remember? We're going to pop our hook in, pull a loop through, pass the yarn forward, because we're passing it in where all the tail ends are going. Your yarn always goes in the wrong side of your work. Okay, now, when you attach your yellow, you've got to give it a bit of a tug so that you can make sure it's not too loose but make sure it's not too tight either or you're not going to be able to crochet through your stitches yeah so grabbing your tail end of the yellow and pulling it through the two loops of your black pop your hook 
under the loop that you just made and into your very first stitch. Pull the loop through, two loops, yarn over, pull through two, that's your first stitch. And now you do a normal single crochet there and a normal in your next stitch like so. Don't complete it. Pass your yarn forward on the wrong side of your work, grabbing your black tail, picking it up, pulling it through. Lifting your hook under that loop that you just made, yes, and into your very first stitch. Pull the loop through like so and complete your single crochet. And there's your second one, your third, fourth, fifth and yes we did one last one six don't complete it now you've got your little tail end here tighten it up a little bit pass it forward under your work right now here guess what we don't have a yellow remember we crocheted over it before you need another yellow yes it's going to get tricky again but not too long not too long the other way you could do it is you could have made the pieces and attached them to your work but this is this is graph ganning guys this is something I always wanted to show uh, everyone on the channel and I've done that in the past but I'm never going to do it again yep <laughs> pass your you like that never gonna do it again pass your work forward like so grabbing your new yellow this whole new thread pop it on the hook pull it through don't make it too short because you need to be able to weave that in later passing it in and single crocheting into your three stitches one two and three start it hold it there guess what you're passing it forward and you're picking up a black pull it through like so making sure your yellow is a little bit tight not too much yeah and then you're lifting that little thread remember that little thread right there popping into the stitch and you are completing your stitch and you're doing your 17 I'm sorry let's try 18 <laughs> I can't count guys 18 stitches all the way across your row guys how'd you go I ended up tangling my yarn <laughs> you can see the yarn look at that we go we have to detangle okay all right so there's our mm, yes there's one more stitch right there single crochet in that stitch and you are slip stitching I'm going to take mine out because I can't see anything here can you see yours <laughs> oh black what do you do huh all right, so slip stitching into the top of that stitch there. Pull the loop through. Just pull up a loop for a minute, all right? Before you do any turning and whatever, I would suggest detangling your work. All righty, guys, here we are, all detangled. <laughs> now, remember how we um, slip stitched through to there? Oh, let's bring this up. Remember how we slip stitched through to there and we had a little chain? What I want you to do is pull up a loop. You're thinking, no, not another color change. Yes, another color change. And this time we are changing right back to our green. Best part is we won't be using the black anymore. So turn your piece towards you, right? Because remember we crocheted this way and we slip stitched like that, yeah? So now you need to turn it that way. It's so hard to see the black. Grab that little loop there, popping your hook in your. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to see that black in the first stitch there. All right, so grabbing your green. It's like I said, it was going to be a tricky uh, tutorial, guys. I mentioned that right from the beginning because we are carrying yarn, and a lot of people don't like to carry yarn. But there you go. They like to actually crochet all the way through. Okay. But I just carry from the sides. I don't crochet all the way through. 
All right, so let's just go into, I'm going to actually crochet over that tail though, that's for sure. All right, so what you're going to do is chain one and just tighten everything up. In the same stitch you are, single crochet, one, popping your stitch marker in there like so. All right, single into your second one. Single into your third, and as you can see, I'm knotted for starters. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm crocheting over my tail. All right, so there's another single and another single. I think that's enough crocheting over the tail. One more just for fun. Oh, I should say one more for good measure. Pass it over there, and okay, we are going singles all the way over to your yellow seventeen and eighteen there's my eighteenth black we're gonna pop the hook in pull a loop like normal pop your yarn in your fingers at the back there picking up your yellow okay pulling that loop through single into the first yellow the second and when you go into your third you're just going to keep going third one fourth one going over your black fifth sixth seventh eighth nine and tenth now you can keep using this thread which one is it that one there i'll keep using this one's got more thread on it or you can change to the other yellow thread that you've got there whichever's got the most you don't need too much now anyways so just pop that there and into your 11th and into your 12th you're going to start it stop it now you need to grab yet again another green it's up to you, you can start cutting your blacks now. I would wait, I would just attach the green first, finish the green row, and then you can cut your blacks. Because you might find you would like another row, I wouldn't. Um, I think I would leave it exactly like this. Attaching your green like so, into your black. Sorry about the black, guys. One, <laughs> but it wouldn't be the same if you didn't do you know the black there it needs the black there all right so just crocheting over your green tail for as long as you would like to do that I don't know four five six stitches I think six will be plenty I think that's five doesn't matter we'll pop it at the back that's perfect and green all the way to the end and I'll pop this on fast for you and off we go Seventeen and eighteen. Now it's got a whole lot of thread on my eighteenth, so I'm just gonna oh look, I'm so far away. <laughs> so there's a whole lot of black thread there on my eighteenth. I'm just gonna pass it down like that and crochet over that mm, tight stitch right there with the knot in it. There. And then we're going to slip stitch right into the green. And pull the loop through, taking out that stitch marker Rooney there. Okay. Once again, you are chaining one, turning your work, and you're working in the very next single crochet. Grabbing your stitch marker, popping it in there. And off you go. I'm going to pop this on fast again until you get to the yellow. Seventeen and eighteen, holding it there. Now, where are your tail ends? They are on the inside, so you're passing your thread on the inside, picking up the yellow. And what I want you to do is start your yellow for now. So you're popping your hook under that loop 
and going into the very first yellow try not to miss that first V it's easy to do yeah and do your one two three and four I would hold it there for a minute just cutting these black threads because they're going to tangle on you you won't be using the black anymore all right so you're going to cut all of the black threads everywhere there's one let's pull it out and it's just less less yarn to tangle if that makes any sense pull that out oh that's it that's all the blacks done and now we're just working on the yellows now you should have two yellows attached so grab one of the yellows you don't need that one making sure you're cutting the right one and you get rid of that guy as well so now you should only have four threads attached to your work I'm sorry let's try three one yellow and two greens for now and that's going to change in the next round get excited All right, so we continue uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and on the twelfth one, we are changing to our green. Pop that there, bring your yellow forward grabbing your green pulling the loop through lifting up under that loop and into your very first green stitch don't miss it and off you go doing your 18 across let's pop this on fast for you and off we go Seventeen and oh, let's get a close up. I think I'm on my eighteenth. I can't even remember now. <laughs> there it is, eighteen. I am. <laughs> Work up, Mary. Slip stitch into that stitch with your stitch marker. Pull a loop through. Pull it through to the loop you are in. Take out that stitch marker. You are chaining one and you are turning your row yet again. Okay, single in your next stitch. Grabbing your stitch marker. There you go. All right, pull that loop up. Now, before we continue, that is it for all your colors. Seriously, you are now going to crochet green in the round over and over again. All right, so what we're going to do to save any hassles, we are going to cut all our colored ends. Not our greens, just our coloured ends. So cut your yellow. We'll leave everything else until we do this final row. Because I just don't want to confuse you. But just getting rid of that yellow was the best thing. And then after we do this row right here, we're going to weave in all these little bibs and bobs you see lying around. Okay? So you've done your one single crochet and there's your second. Let's go fast all the way until we get to our yellow colour. And off we go. Seventeen. I'm going to hold it there for a minute because my yarn has tangled here. Give me one moment. All right. Now we're under control. Sorry, guys. It happens. So what I'm going to do is just pop all these little ends uh, inside because it's only going to confuse us. So pop all your little ends inside, except, of course, this one green you see right here. I'll talk about that one in a minute. And there's nothing you need to do with that one yet. Oh, what do I do with the end here? Hello, oh, it's on the opposite side. Wake up, Mary. Here we go. All right. So all your ends are out of your way. And let's get a close-up. All your ends should be stuck right down into there. And you're just jumping into your green near the start of your yellow. Let's just move this so that you can see. 
and straight into your yellow with your green. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, that was your last yellow. Leave your green thread there. Just jump straight into that next green stitch and do your 18 across. I'm going to pop this on fast for you and off we go. Seventeen. Let's get a nice close up there. And eighteen. Slip stitch into the stitch with a stitch marker in it, like so. Chain one, pull up a loop, undo your stitch marker for a minute. Grab this other green that is, you know, spare green there that you've got. So you should have no more threads hanging off your work except the green that we are working with all right so what you should have is that <laughs> don't you love it don't you love it <laughs> so that's the start of it believe it or not that's just the start but that was the tricky part the rest is easy guys the rest is easy before you continue on, I want you to weave in all these ends. But your next job now is to do single crochet across this way, turn, single crochet this way, turn, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, roughly around 16 rows, okay? That's for me and my tight crocheting. You can get away with either 15 or 16 rows. So I think the best bid for now is to do another 15 rows of single crochet backward and forward backward and forward meet me back here once you've completed your rows and we'll talk about what we're going to do next ta-da here we are guys now I'm way at the end of my row we have a couple of more things we need to do um, very main thing is this row here is the final row up the top and then we have to work on the bottom but let me just finish off this single crochet row. Don't forget, guys, you need to weave in all your ends. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but weave them in. All right, so now we are going to slip stitch into that stitch right there. Now, um, it doesn't matter where you are. This next row needs to be done. Let's chain one first. It needs to be done on the outside of your work. Now, this is entirely up to you. You can either do one more row of single crochet and call it, that's it. Or you can do what yours truly is doing. And it's a thing called a reverse stitch um, or a crab stitch. All right. So if you haven't done this before, it can be a little tricky. It works against everything crocheters do. <laughs> It works backwards okay so it's a little awkward it's still a single crochet but it's a single crochet backwards and let's just try one we are in this stitch here we want to go right into the next stitch there so pull up your loop a little bit hold your loop it helps to hold it pop your hook into the stitch behind you Pull a loop through like normal. So it's like you're doing a normal single crochet, but you're kind of on an angle. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yes. Now jump directly into the very next stitch there. Oh, it's not so tight would be all right. <laughs> pull a loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two directly into your next stitch pull a loop through two loops yarn over pull through two all right now what i'm going to do is place a stitch marker right there that's the very first one you did place your stitch marker there 
so making sure you're getting into don't skip any stitches here making sure you're getting into every stitch you will have a gap if you skip stitches so make sure you're not skipping any okay all right so there you go how gorgeous is this stitch take your time you don't need to rush it like me i'm just used to this stitch i love doing it and i've had professional crocheters who still say they won't do this stitch so if you're struggling with it do not stress all right so if you really are struggling you can actually just do your row of single crochets but for the rest of us do your gorgeous back stitch crab stitch um, whatever you want to call it reverse single crochet whatever you want to call it do it all the way over and what I want you to do let me grab a little sewing needle just so I can show you exactly where to go I need you to go to let's see let's go to the front because this is where you now you will be like this okay what you'll have is that loop right before your um, stitch marker and then you'll have this one right here it's kind of a big gap it's like because that's more of your sit, slip stitch area so just get to maybe two stitches before and we'll have a look at that section once you're done go ahead and finish that row and i'll meet you there in a moment Alrighty, guys here we are look how gorgeous this looks i love it so much here we are at the end of the row how distracted do i get seriously all right so i'll get you a nice close-up here and what i asked you to do was to get to this area that was our first um stitch and in here i might have left too many stitches but anyway in there i've got one i need to do yes and the second one kind of jumps right into the slip stitched area hold it there now what you're going to do is turn your work this way pop your hook back in there oh, not that way it's got to come this way <laughs> thread's got to the thread's got to be in front of you yeah and now what we're going to do is slip stitch into that stitch marker stitch there like so then pull up a loop take out your stitch marker and what you have is that now it's sticking up so what you're going to do is grab your sewing darning weaving needle and give my thread a bit of a cut it's all very splitty now i've been playing with it too much as you do i tend to play with my cotton a lot <laughs> i really do i love cotton all right as you all know well my regulars do if you're joining us new welcome today by the way um all right so we slip stitched in that way we want to get rid of that lump as well so what i want to do is actually pass my needle this is on the inside of the work here pass my needle into the back of the stitches that we just made when we first started just check the front make sure all i can see the needle so we're going to take that out we don't want to be able to see the needle from the front so you are literally going so you've got that bit of a gap there don't worry about that gap you're going into the threads behind your work check the front and now we can't see the needle so we just pull that through and what it'll do now i'll show you once we do give it a tug it hides the whole knot and you can't see it at all all right and uh, that's one reason why i love this particular look because it literally hides your knot so you keep going through a little bit not too much all right and then you go back in the same direction that you're coming through but not in the same stitches of course because you don't want to unravel so i just come out of that stitch there so i'm going to jump over and go into the sides of the very next stitch So just pull that thread through like so and into the very next few stitches again I think we'll call it quits there but let's make sure we can't see it from the front and do your part and there we go give your work a cut that will never come out pop it all into place and that is your stubby holder top part 
of your stubby holder. Can we bring it out a bit? Yeah, the top part. So, you know, it's, you know, okay. Now we haven't finished. No, we've got one more job to do, but it's going to be a quick and easy job. You're going to love it. Go down to the bottom of your work. Well, it might be a little bit fiddly to begin with, but it's relatively easy. Remember when we went into the back loops before? We still have a loop right there to go into. See these little loops right here? Yes? You're going to go into those loops. So this is the back, that's the front, and that's the back where we first started. I'm going to pop my hook in that loop right there. Grab your green thread. We're going to do a row of single crochets in that loop and then a row of single crochets on top of that. Pull your loop through like so. Okay, chain one. In the same stitch, you're popping a single crochet. Get excited, guys. We are nearing the end of this tutorial. Took longer than I thought, guys, didn't it? <laughs> really did. Thought it was going to be quick and easy. Oh, was I wrong? Um, we're going to crochet over the tail just a little bit, but not much. In fact, I don't think we will because I don't want to make this area thick. So I'm going to drop the tail and not worry about it. And just keep doing our single crochets in every stitch in a round. And remember, you should actually have 48 stitches because that's what we started off with. Yeah. I'm going to pop this on fast and off we go until we get to the end of the row. Getting closer there, guys. All right. Okay, so it's a little bit awkward here. This is the joins and the slip stitch and so on. But there is still one more there. And then I think we need to slip stitch to join in there. Like so. All right. Now, take out your stitch marker. Chain one. We're not going to do any turns. We're just doing a single crochet in the same stitch that you are in super duper easy this row off you go doing your single crochets all the way across all right so just keep going in there and i will meet you back here when you get to there all right so keep putting your single crochets in every stitch you come to get to this stitch right here and i'll meet you back once you're done Alrighty guys, how did you go? How did you go? How did you go? Now I am, I think, two stitches away. I can't for the life of me remember. <laughs> Can you believe it? I can't for the life of me remember. Uh, yes, two stitches away. So we've got to put one in there. And one in there. And then what we're going to do is slip stitch into there. Now if you wanted to, I'm going to pull up a loop and cut. If you wanted to, you could do another row, another two rows, another three rows. Uh, it can tend to curl up a little bit, so I'm going to leave mine like that. Okay, oh, I'll take out the stitch marker first. Oh, I see something shiny over there. What's that? Well, it's definitely not a um, <laughs> stubby, because I don't have a stubby, but that's my old water bottle. So there you go, guys. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you when it comes up. Enjoy yourself. I'm so glad we are actually made it this year. Last year, I like literally did it on the same day. <laughs> but this year, we've got plenty of time to spare. And not just that, you have an opportunity to either make this particular stubby holder or these gorgeous two, well, I'll say two hearts, pin cushions, um, for your St. Patrick's Day. Thank you so much for watching. And all I want to say right now is, oh, 
happy St. Patrick's Day. Ciao for now.